Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to show you amazing photos that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by displaying these photos. But that's the whole point. These photos are proof that a small occult elite of a race didn't make the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, before I start, don't forget to subscribe to my backup channel. Please check the link in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Perfect. All over the world, we find the remains of the same civilization. We've lost touch of who we are as talented culture. Our history is merely his story enshrouded in mystery, occulted throughout recorded time. Ancient civilizations across the world share similarities that even the most ardent skeptics can't deny. These ancient Aryan architects built the Egyptians' pyramids, Stonehenge, and other megalithic sites in India, China, Sumer, Peru, Europe, and the Americas. The Kaimanawa Wall is a large stone structure in the Kaimanawa Forest near Lake Taupo, New Zealand. Mainstream theorists claim the wall is a natural phenomenon. You decide. Abraxas, Abrasax, Abraxas, is the Gnostic name for the demigod who rules the 365th highest and finally on, or sphere, ascending to the unknowable god. Christian demonologists put Abraxas in the ranks of demons. Abraxas also was the name of a sun mounting an Ouroboros, a snake biting its tail, held by the highest Egyptian goddess, Isis, the creator of the sun and mistress of all the gods. Isis mythology found its way into Gnosticism. In addition, Abraxas was associated with the Mithraic mystery religion of Persian origin, the chief rival of Christianity in Rome in its first 400 years, as did Gnosticism, Mithraism featured a complex astrology and numerology. Numerical values of Mithras and Abraxas names each total 365. The Gnostic Abraxas created the material world and also had demonic qualities. He is the supreme power of being, in whom light and darkness are both united and transcended. Orthodox Christians viewed Abraxas as a demon. In turn, Abraxas became a favorite deity of heretical sects of the Middle Ages. Gnostic talismans made of carved opal show Abraxas as a figure with a human body, the hand of a rooster, or occasionally a hawk, and serpent legs. His hands hold a shield and a whip, the shield usually inscribed with the name Yao, reminiscent of the Jewish four-letter name of God. He is often mounted on a chariot drawn by four white horses, with both sun and moon overhead. The rooster represents wakefulness and is related to the human heart and the universal heart, the sun. The human torso embodied the principle of logos, or articulated thought. The snake legs indicate prudence. The shield is symbolic of wisdom, the great protector of divine warriors. The whip denotes the relentless driving power of life. The four horses symbolize the four ethers by which solar power is circulated throughout the universe. The seven letters of the name of Abraxas represent the seven creative powers and angels, recognized in the ancient world. The letters add up to a numerological value of 365, the number of days and powers of the year. Carl G. Jung called Abraxas the truly terrible one because of his ability to generate truth and falsehood, good and evil, light and darkness, with the same word and in the same deed. In Junjun psychology, there is no easy way out of psychic conflict. One must not only fight on the side of the angels, but occasionally join the host of the fallen angels. According to Jung, fear of Abraxas is the beginning of wisdom, and liberation, or gnosis, is achieved by not resisting. By the way, this is an old photo of people eating at a crowded restaurant, 2019 BC before Corona. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learn something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. 
and watch to the end to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Since J.P. Morgan stopped funding Wardenclyffe, the United States government stepped in and rebuilt and finished Wardenclyffe at the New Yorker Hotel. It is a lie that he died in poverty inside the New Yorker Hotel. The truth that has been hidden from the public is that Tesla succeeded in building a second Wardenclyffe hidden in plain sight on top of the New Yorker Hotel, which in the 1930s and 40s was the most advanced hotel in the world. The electric wizard was not left out in the cold to die penniless. He was embraced and loved and cared for by the black world and given a second chance to do uninterrupted research away from the whims of the bankers. The New Yorker Hotel was his private very own little Area 51. The rooftop of the New Yorker Hotel has never been an observation deck and is occupied mostly by mechanical equipment. Bluff piece on the view from the top. They don't show the equipment. The New Yorker has an abandoned underground tunnel. Here is the truth in detail about the New Yorker Hotel. There's a power plant in the basement. The New Yorker Hotel was the most advanced hotel in the world technologically when it was built, says Kinney. It's 1 million square feet above ground and 200,000 square feet below ground. The Institute of Electrical and Electrical Engineers, or IEE, named the New Yorker Hotel an IEE milestone in electrical engineering and computing for having the largest DC generating plant in the United States when it was built. It was also one of the first cogeneration power plants in the world. There were only a little over 100 IEE milestone sites in the world, and the New Yorker Hotel joins the ranks of places like Niagara Falls and Bell Laboratories. The power plant was installed in 1929 and had enough capacity to provide electrical power for a city of 35,000 people. As such, the hotel remained completely off the power grid for 30 years. High-pressure boilers made 180 pounds steam, sending it over to a massive eight-cylinder diesel locomotive steam engine that powered the direct current electric generators. Exhaust steam was used for heating and other activities within the building, providing the cogeneration part of the plant. Down in the basement, you can still see the motors, over 200 of them, and a 60-foot-long switchboard, which Kinney refers to as the Frankenstein board. Even though J.P. Morgan abandoned Tesla in his time of need, the U.S. government did not. It swooped in and helped him rebuild Wardenclyffe and provided unlimited funding. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.